Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. I dressed up for you today. Actually, I just came in from going out. Went out with the guy that bought the MBL Extremes here in Houston. I featured him in previous videos. Fun night out. Uh, and actually, these I've got these Facebook glasses and I can record with the glasses. Actually, the battery's dead now. I recorded so much material. So if you're a member of my site, that's where I share some of the fun stuff we do and more controversial videos. Um, so be on the lookout for that if you are a member. But um, I want to do also, while I had to moment, record a video to supplement another video I'm releasing at the same time, which is on female vocals and strictly female vocals on the geo research and extremes. And in this video, I wanted to explain why and kind of talk about the mastering and when you can blame the gear versus mastering and what tracks you should use as references uh, and do a deeper dive into Adele particularly. And the reason is, is that so many people share reference playlists and so many songs, similar songs get put on everybody's reference playlist. But we know there's not a whole lot of discussion of what really sh should you be listening for in these songs? What is really the recording just being super great? And what is your gear doing? And sometimes I'll use the analogy of the Coke and Pepsi challenge. Coke and Pepsi had the, well, Pepsi used to do that Pepsi challenge and say they won. But what they didn't tell you is that they usually only gave the participants testing very small doses of each one. And because Pepsi's sweeter, it would often win if you were just taking a small swig of both. But over the course of drinking an entire can of each, actually Coke would win. And so how does that apply to the audiophile world? And mistakes that I've made in the past and I still see being made very prevalent in the industry. What happens is, is that these same few recordings, Keith Don't Go, Fink, all these other ones, uh, Dire Straits, whatever, that will sound good with almost any system, um, get played ad nauseum, and then people get wowed by the systems that maybe even accentuate even more so than what's truly recorded. Some of these are recorded very good, but it's just the harmonic structure of the bass and whatnot that it, it, it can't sound grating no matter what, just the way the harmonic structure is. And so speakers that have very etched tweeters and top, top heavy, they don't really sound that bad with these songs. In fact, they may even, like Pepsi in a short dose, may even impress you more than really it should. Um, and so people make decisions based on short auditions of ultra good tracks, easy tracks. And then when they get home and play other things that are lesser quality recordings, then they can't listen to their system or they blame their recording too much. You know, yes, there are obvious differences in mastering and qualities that you should be able to hear on your speakers, no doubt. But the difference between mastering, all of these guys are somewhat qualified, somewhat competent in what they're doing, such that the worst recording shouldn't sound unlistenable in most cases. There's always going to be exceptions. And conversely, these best quality recordings that people hold out usually aren't as great as you when you actually analyze the dynamic range and whatnot. It's just that the harmonics of what they're doing and in the headroom and stuff that they have make it very hard for it to sound bad. So these ones that are tilted up and have problems actually sound in short doses better. So the key is, how do you solve this problem? And I wish in one video I could solve it for you. But I want a deeper dive into one artist, Adele, in a second. But another way you can do this is with EQ and trial and ever, error. And if you remember, I did a video that showed how I initially dialed in the GR Research and Extremes using test tones and your own ears to kind of balance things and direct. And that's very helpful. But there's no substitute for music and the harmonics that actual music triggers. And then what type of music do you listen to? Do you listen to a wide range that you're going to need an EQ curve that kind of encompasses a good balance between the mastering quality? Or do you only listen to audiophile stuff? Or do you only listen to rap or pop or something like that? That might influence what you do with your curve. Because ultimately, your EQ should be whatever makes you your system sound better. 
And it's a more superior approach than constantly going on a mirror, uh, gear merry-go-round to trying to find it with gear or power cords or tuning with fuses and all this stuff. That's a never ending, never happy place you'll get to um, versus what you can do with EQ. You can even do an EQ per song. So one thing about this video is advocating EQ, but also it's gonna piggyback on another video that I've done in the past. In particular, one I just did about video content, having video content on your system. Because when, let's talk about mastering and let's deep dive into Adele real quick. What if I told you the Cobuzz and Tidal versions of Adele, a, a recent recording, obviously probably mastered on digital first, primarily. But what if I told you LP had a higher dynamic range and the video, official video on YouTube, had higher dynamic range than Cobuzz and Tidal? True story. People have analyzed it. It's true. And so here's another. I had two main takeaways from adding video to your system, you know, obviously some content on video you're never going to have on streaming. And then some of the video, uh, as, you know, from a visual standpoint, adds to your enjoyment versus just staring at a wall. But the third aspect is in some cases, and Adele is a perfect example, the actual video version is better recorded. Now, compression is high with the Cobas and Tidal version, and it doesn't mean all the time that compression is bad. There's a reason sometimes for doing it, and it's the lesser of two evils sometimes versus letting these peaks go crazy. So it doesn't always sound bad, and it should never sound totally unlistenable, but it should be noticeable. And easy on me, that's why I included it in the next video. It's clear as day. The, her mic is so loud on the very initial parts of her singing, and you can just tell your your ears almost kind of subliminally prepare yourself for when she hits those high notes to be a little bit grating, but then you can almost hear how they compressed it. And all a compression really is, is kind of a volume fader. You know, it's basically just reducing the delta between the lowest passages in the song and the highest passages. So it's kind of taking some of the volume down at the highest points. And what does that do? That's changing what's recorded. And guess what that means? Distortion. It sounds almost phasey, but it, technically it's distortion. It's changing what's recorded. So you want your system to be able to uncover that and you want to be able to hear that, yes, that's a compressed recording. But on the flip side, they did compression pretty good and it's not totally unlistenable. So finding that happy place with your gear and being able to determine whether you blame your gear or the recording is something that you only can gain with experience and using tons of different reference tracks. So that's why I picked some a wide variety in the next video, but you're going to want even more than that. And to further deep dive on Adele, I want to talk about one of her older recordings, Someone Like You where you can go back on video and watch on YouTube almost 20 different versions of her singing that live. Now, what's the value of that? Well, you've got the same singer and the same song, two things kept constant. And then you've got video where you can see her mouth position to the mic. You can see the venue, whether it's venue echo or fake echo. You can see so many things that you, we're not there at the original mastering. We're not in the studio. So do you just throw up your arm to say, well, we're never going to know what the mastering engineer said. So we don't know. And I don't know if mines are accurate or not. That's true technically. But when you can get more and more information and know that these people are somewhat competent, you will start realizing, hey, I think that this is what the recording engineer was hearing. This does make sense what he was doing. He's not totally ridiculously incompetent, uh, but he made these trade-offs here in this song and he does this thing or that thing in particular. The voice engineer with Adele in particular is the same one, I looked it up, that worked on Freyer Writings. Uh, and if you look, use that song Lost Without You that a lot of people use in reference playlists, you'll hear that he puts some fake echo in her voice. Well, guess what? I uncovered a few instances, and I'll show it in the next video, where he did that in Easy On Me. Not to the same level, but he did it on one time she sang this word, but not on another time she said 
sang that same word. And then he, it didn't echo the piano, but it echoed her voice when, you know, the song was playing. So you start to pick out things that are part mastering decisions versus your gear. You won't make that, you know, decision of blaming the gear erroneously for things that are mastering and vice versa. Sometimes it is your gear that's exaggerating or making a caricature of either really great recordings or making other things unlistenable to making it sound much worse than it really was recorded. So again, it's, I wish I could give you a formula to do this right. And again, we've joked in the past about people making decisions based on one track, you know, buying a speaker, you know, in reality, Nobody should ever make that decision based on one or two tracks. And all of these reviews that show four or five that they mentioned in the review where they made their conclusions, that's totally irresponsible. There's no way you can make a judgment. In my case, I have to go through sometimes 200 tracks before I hear um, certain issues with certain harmonics in a certain song or a certain genre. You know, so... You know, you want to find dealers like I featured in the past, like 3MA, that, yeah, you'll buy it, maybe only take being able to audition for an hour or so in certain songs. But when you take it home and do hundreds of songs or three months, a month, two months, you know, you can always trade it in and buy something else if it's not what you want long term. So finding those relationships, as well as understanding what to listen for, what tracks to listen for, what mastering versus your gear is responsible for, is a learning curve that you want to invest in. And so to start that off, I shared some of the tracks in this next um, video specifically to help you along that way. It's not in, all encompassing and I'll share some more in the future, but just to start. So I hope you enjoyed. If so, Sign up, subscribe, and I'll see you back here soon.